put a call to action out on my Twitter page at JD Pacala said, what do you want to see? Rather, who do you want to see in the next Honest Look video? And y'all responded. Shout out to the Miami Hurricane faithful. Y'all responded and said, give us the Hurricanes. And so here we are taking an honest look at the Miami football program headed into year two of the Super Mario Crystal Ball era. There's a lot of frustration around what happened in 2022, and that's fair. I understand. Here's what I would offer to that thought process. Not all first-year jobs are created equal. Translation, a lot of what went wrong in 2022 for Mario Cristobal and company, a lot of that was already there when he got there. And some of it was covered by the flash of what TVD did in 2021. Some of it was, was covered by the excitement and buzz around how open the ACC looked. But in reality, he had a personnel issue, did not have the individuals around TVD, offensively or defensively, to compete at an ACC conference title level. You had a culture issue. And I want to tread lightly on this because a lot of it is bits and pieces that we're able to glean from different stories and things that have happened. Here's the deal. You had 20 guys transfer out. I will not be so foolish to say that all 20 of those guys were a culture problem and they got forced out. I don't think that's the case, but I think it's telling. Anytime you have a mass exodus after the first year of a new head coach, I think that's telling. Okay? Again, not all 20, but I think there is some culture cleansing that is going on in-house at Miami. And Mario Cristobal, if, I mean, if, if you know anything about him, you know anything about how he gets down, he don't play, man. He does not mess around. He is all business. It is his way or the highway. And so to have this max, mass exodus of 20 guys, I mean, you hate to lose personnel that can help you. And you hate to lose good personnel that wasn't a part of the culture issue. But in some ways you say, hey, we, we need to get this thing corrected. We need to get this thing corrected. And if it becomes a matter of, We'll, we'll just cut the whole thing out. We'll, we'll cut it all out. Okay, we'll do it that way too. It's not fun, but I promise you, Mario Cristobal is getting this corrected. Back to the personnel issue. Top 10 recruiting class. Missed a bowl game. Top 10 recruiting class in Coral Gables. Super Mario recruiting. Lifeblood of college football. Talent acquisition. Doing what he does. I'm just saying. If you're frustrated with 2022, I understand. The future, I think, is reasonably, bright, is reasonably bright for Miami. More on that in a second. If you have not yet subscribed to this operation, we would love to have you part of the party. We'd love to have you part of the Hard Count family. You can hit me up on Instagram or on Twitter, at JD Pacal. The DMs stay wide open. Would love to hear from y'all. We're doing this video because y'all got at me on Twitter and said we want to see an honest look at Miami. And so this is the People Show. Nick, break, lift, and heavy. This is your show. So we appreciate you in advance for that. What's going on right now, though? At the time of us recording this, they are yet to hire an offensive coordinator. You just hired Lance Gidry to be your DC, who was at McNeese State. He was at Tulane. He is more or less a proven commodity from a defensive coordinator perspective. Now, the offensive coordinator hire, I think, is going to be crucial because the pressure will be on you as the new OC to get Tyler Van Dyke back to 2021 form. Josh Gaddis was obviously fired as the offensive coordinator at Miami. There are some people that believe he wasn't really the problem. Some people believe that he was maybe just the fall guy. I'm not here to speculate too much further on that. I just think it's interesting because from a personnel perspective, on the offensive line, you weren't good enough. Receiver play was not consistent enough, especially against Texas A&M. That was a game that I think really could have Helped turn the tide a little bit of Miami's season. But Tyler Van Dyke, coming out of 2021, he had NFL draft buzz. He had first-round pick NFL draft buzz. He had Heisman buzz. And then to see what happened in 2022, I refuse to believe that Tyler Van Dyke got worse over the course of an offseason. I just, I do not buy into that. What I look at is the offense averaging 3.3 yards a carry, which is 110th in the country. I look at 8.5% sack rate, which is good for 99th in the country, in terms of protecting TVD. Those are the issues where I say, 
How's my first round quarterback supposed to operate when he can't get protected and we can't run the football? So it's all on number nine. Now, don't get it twisted. Great players are supposed to make up for weaknesses within your system. But hey, man, there's only so much we can do when we're that one dimensional. And also, we can't protect you when you're throwing the football. So TVD, he needs to get better. I'm not excusing TVD. But I do think that what you see in the portal with Mario Cristobal and company going and getting not one, not two, but three offensive linemen, notably JV and Cohen from Alabama, I think that tells you something. It shows you the self-awareness from Mario Cristobal. We understand if we're Miami, we got to get better in the trenches. We have to be a tougher operation. I expect them to also be a buyer in the portal post-spring when it comes to getting some more playmakers, some more toys for TVD. I think Henry Parrish is a good back, too. I'll, I'll say that. I think he is a guy that can tote the rock. Can you get an offensive line to get the play started? It's like eating without a plate. You can do it. You can sort of find a way to, to handhold whatever it is that you're eating, but if you don't have a plate to be the foundation for your offense going forward, there might be issues. You feel what I'm saying? So the offensive coordinator hire is going to be very, very important. Needless to say, I don't think that's novel analysis. You have to max out Tyler Van Dyke and max out whatever is around him. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect in 2023. Okay, it, that's that's not the expectation. But can you work smarter, not harder to allow TVD to be successful and to put him in positions where it's not all on him? Okay, so very interested to see who they hire there. But it's not going to stay this way with Mario Cristobal. It's just not. It's it's not 2022. Like I said, not all first years are created equal. But here's what 2023 hinges on for me. Improved play around TVD. Like I already told you, the young talent from this top 10 class, will be asked to contribute early. Francis Malagoa, director of scouting and rankings for on three, Charles Power, called him the most ready-to-play offensive lineman in this cycle. So, Francis, sounds like you're going to play, brother. I see a need on the offensive line. I see a talented freshman. Let's rock, baby. Hey, you came to Miami to play. You came to Miami to be great. Let's roll, brother. I don't think Francis Malagoa is the exception to what the expectation will be for that class. If I'm, if I'm in that class, I'm licking my chops saying, I know I can ball. I got to get developed. I got to get used to the college level, but there, there is a chance to contribute right away. How much are they able to contribute? What's the efficacy of impact with this class in 2023? I think that'll determine a lot of how successful they're able to be. 2023, to me, is not going to be the year. It could be. I want to rephrase that. It could be the year. It's college football. Wilder things have happened. Heck, TCU went from missing a bowl game to playing for a national title. It could happen for Miami in 2023, but I think what you need to focus on, if you're a Miami Hurricane faithful and internally within that program, is setting the foundation. Setting the foundation for what Miami is going to be beyond 2023. Leave Miami better than you found it if you're a senior going somewhere else. Setting the floor. Everybody knows if you want to build something, whether it's a house or a skyscraper, you want to build something worthwhile, start with the foundation. And you don't get to skip out on building that foundation sturdy and strong and having it all the way developed and then get to build upwards. No, no, no. You build that foundation as strong as it gets, as strong as it can be. That will determine how high you can go with the roof, with the interior, with all the nice things that people see. The foundation is being laid in Coral Gables by Mario Cristobal and company. So 2023, I believe, is where you solidify that foundation, get a great OC for Tyler Van Dyke. You're working in the portal to get some great offensive linemen. I think Francis Malagoa will play as a freshman. I believe that. Lay the foundation, baby. That's what it's about in 2023 for the Miami Hurricanes. This has been the Hard Count. Nick Brake, Lift and Heavy. We appreciate y'all rocking with us. We appreciate y'all getting at me on Twitter, man, and making this thing happen. Again, we would not have done this video at this point in time unless y'all had hit us up and said, hey, we want to talk about Miami. We want to hear about Miami. Let's ride. If you have not yet subscribed, would love to have y'all a part of the Hard Count family. 
live on Tuesday and Thursday, 1 Central, 2 Eastern. Get in the chat with us, man. Let, let us know your thoughts, concerns, feelings. Again, when we're live, great time to do it. We're going to keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.